cannot imagine how charming our town in India is. It has been so long since I have written there. In fact, I should like to see it soon. I'm gonna go through the scene and then we're gonna talk about this stupid fucking. Okay, now we can talk about it. Their season, half of the season was his trauma flashbacks of his father dying and his mother almost dying, giving birth. You think this man, this man, has healed that much? I don't even know how long it takes to get to India at this point. Oh, wanna look it up? <laughs> <laughs> Four to six months. That's a boat, baby. That's a boat, baby. She's having a baby on a boat with some fucking rats, and a guy over here has scurvy. No. I'm actually like falling apart. I hate that. Hi. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to the channel. It is I once again, Miata Lebele, joined again by the beautiful Marissa Rivera. Hi. Hello. Um, we're gonna try to jump right in. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. But we are, of course, gonna have a little bev before we a get bev into bev or two before we talk about episode seven. Something that I forgot to say. After our last episode, episode six review, mm -hmm. I went back and I thought about it and I was like, hmm, Bridgerton actually messes up every episode six. Season one, episode six was the episode where Daphne raped Simon. Episode six of season two was the wedding episode. Oh <laughs> my so, God. So episode six is actually the point where they- 666, the devil's number. The devil's number. It's the devil's <laughs> number. It's actually where they mess up every time. Now, I think it makes sense from a storytelling point of view. It's where you actually have to have all of your conflicts kind of peak mm -hmm. and everything needs to come down. But as we kind of talked about before, they're not really good at- creating conflict and resolving conflict. Or if it is resolved, it's resolved immediately. Immediately. And the conflict is like, it's never earned. Never earned. Episode six seems to be their problem episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel like, unfortunately, every time they do this, they're fighting from behind for the rest of the season. Yes. Because they want, like, if you lose me in an episode, then I'm kind of like, oh, okay. How are you going to save it in two episodes? How are you going to save it in two episodes? And... I feel like season one, somehow they were able to do a decent job at that. Season two, they were- I'll tell you why. Because it was actually Daphne and Simon's story. season. Yes. And their story. Yes. And so all the focus. Yes. And all the yes. screen time was on them. That's right. I, I was, Paul and is one of my favorite couples. And so to have the season really not, fully center around them mm -hmm. was very annoying. It's very, and they did it in season two. Like, like season two to me was a huge, like, like when guys in episode seven, I think was it episode seven where I had even forgotten this, where of fucking Anthony. Kate, where Kate is in a coma. Where, or was she in a coma in episode eight? <laughs> Do you remember when Kate was in a coma for like half the of an whole episode? episode yeah. yeah. Who can, what and, do you and he doesn't visit her. I, there's something we've talked about this this whole season especially starting at episode six something was off and we didn't know what it was it would and i think we have actually said in another review it feels like something was cut that we're missing mm -hmm. something i do feel like they did cut things that they cut it for time thought something was more important but for was fans, ever at this point making us wait years between seasons and a whole month between the first half of this season and the second half we will watch all of the scenes just what? Keep them in. We I will watch an extra 10 to 15 minutes. It's already an hour of our lives with another 10, 15 minutes, especially if it's of the main characters. Come on. Okay, we did do a rant. I was like, we're going to get right to it. No, I think the audience needed to hear it too. I think so many people are upset. Especially after last episode. Yes. Jesus Christ. I think, um, guys, I, I'm looking on the internet and I can't actually find anyone. I can't find anyone happy with the season. Well, it's not anyone who's... Fans of the book. Right. Of the books. But even people I know that are fans of the books who have never read them are even like... What happened? Something, yeah, what happened? What happened? Okay. <sighs> and guess what? Uh, Going in for round two. Bad idea. Oh. Okay. Okay, y'all. We'll see you at the end of the episode.
Or during it. Or we're gonna see you in the middle. <laughs> Myself, as if, as if I was undeserving of your love. That line broke my fucking heart. I will say, he's selling this. And he's selling this. He, he talked about it in in, in an interview. He the original direction was like he was supposed to be yelling at her and that's like, the super book. Mad. That is in the book. The madness is the book direction. But he was like he was like I don't know. He's like it was it was a really long day. I was really tired yeah. and. So this is what came out, and the director loved it. This makes so much more sense for the character they created for Colin. You can, you can Colin. be so mad that you're crying. Yes, very frequently when I'm yeah, upset yeah. and I'm trying to explain myself, tears come up, and I'm like, "Bitch!" Get and then I'm so mad that I'm crying. Yeah, I'm so mad that I'm crying. This to me, it would not make any sense if the character of Colin that we have in the show started verbally being abusive towards Penelope. Mm -hmm. Him crying because he's so hurt, makes the most sense. Yeah. Something that we mentioned in our last review was that if Eloise had told Colin what happened, mm -hmm. he would probably start crying right then and there because mm -hmm. he is very, very soft. And so the second he found out, we've always, as an audience, we would believe that he would begin to cry mm -hmm. because that's the type of character they have. It would make no sense for him to be yeah. loud berating and screaming her. and berating her. I think- I mean, he's giving her a dressing down. Yes, but it coming from like a really uh, hurt, hurt place. place. Somehow this, Watching him be heartbroken and her just be kind of like, yeah, I've been lying. It makes her feel so much worse. I don't know if it's seeing it on the screen mm. versus reading it in a book. I don't know why, but on the page, I was like, you know what? She doesn't owe you shit, Colin. Mm. And here I'm like, Penelope. Penelope, the, cool. Penelope, the fuck? He uh, waltzes away in his pirate coat. That pirate coat looks great. If you ever need it. to like walk away from someone dramatically, dramatically, may we all be wearing a pirate may coat. May we all. Dream! Dream in a storm. Shout out to Dwight. Hey Dwight, what's up, boo? Hey. hey. First of all, that is. How dare you? <laughs> but her, for her mom to use this opportunity to shit on people she's always hated uh. when your daughter needed you. Your daughter needed you. And I feel like everyone in the town shaking their heads, this is not the way Lady Bristledown normally writes. No. She could have taken this opportunity to try to save her daughter. And you know what she did instead? Shit on a family she's jealous of. Yeah. She, hateful. Uh, hateful. There are rumors going on out there <gasps> in the world Don't about Cressida. Apparently, Cressida's mama's name is the same name as Sophie's stepmom's name. I believe it. People are wondering if Cressida is deeply related it somehow to either Sophie or is Sophie, that she uses her middle name or some other fake name in order to come back into the ton after being thrown no, out. No, 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 no
Minute three is the moment that Cressida being Lady Whistledown no longer matters at all. At all. Well, it would have made sense mm -hmm. if they had shown the chase. It would have made sense if we had moments where, where we they were built racing up, to get it out. If we could have built up any sort of stakes around this. Right. No stakes were built. And then she's immediately not Lady Whistledown. Yeah. And we spend the next one in, actually two episodes basically at this point, where she's just getting shit on and then gets shipped off. Yeah. What was the point? King's wife endures daily. Except, I suppose, I just did. <laughs> I and don't now, know. And now she gave a woman armor. Guys, I'm not going to lie. This moment made me so happy. This such yeah. a... But that's the thing. Cressida could... Or not Cressida. Penelope could have this entire time done that. Done this. Been helping every woman in the town who has a deeply abusive husband. Because <laughs> this is a woman who you could... She might have, I could see her having bruises up and down her arms. Mm -hmm. So I am grateful that this woman is able to have this moment, but I'm also like, Penelope, where you been? Yeah. Because baby, have you known about- All this? All of this? The whole time? The whole time. <laughs> that would be crazy. And also like calling out the woman for-, for Who's missing the maid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you known about everyone's cruelties yeah. and only been talking about the, the cute hot goss? What everyone's wearing. What everyone's wearing, because we need to talk about it, Penelope, because if you've known that women it. in the town have been hurt, or not even just in the town, maids have been hurt, and you've been knowing about it, and you ain't been doing shit. Mm. I'm so grateful for everything you've done for me, but already I feel like it's all between you and Colin. Perhaps Once I'm again, Eloise proving true. that she can be a good friend. Or Elo a good sister. Eloise has sucked so hard this season. I don't I don't, uh, it's so hard for me because I'm trying to be positive. But again, we hit episode six and I feel like I am just going to be like constantly just going at this show. Eloise, She's shitty. a little shit this whole season. This whole season. And I would, which, yeah, makes her, because this doesn't happen in the books where she's like, I need to leave and yeah. get some perspective. Like that makes so much, she recognizes that within herself. Yes. So her leaving at the end. It makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. You are the truest friend I have ever known, Mel. The only friend you've ever known. Let me honest, but one. her and Colin. But I've seen a lot of hate for Eloise online, and I think I understand. Like other seasons, now like, at this on, point, come. at the beginning of the season, I was like, "Come on, come on, come on. She's, she's, she's just she has healthy boundaries. Yes, yes, it's just, it's yes. And now I'm like, you can't be a friend to anybody. And this. This is okay, but I do. This is I do get this. Okay. So you are you are the her, Penelope's two great loves are Eloise and Colin. Mm -hmm. You are rooting for Colin, but you are also rooting for Penelope's. Okay. Yes. yes, you do want them to be friends. Again. You do. You want them to really. You want them to work it out, and mm -hmm. one cannot happen with the other, which is I think what they're setting up right now. But mainly because Penelope has no other friends. My God, oh my. I'm sorry. Sometimes you have the but bad guys. Because Eloise. No, but that's because Eloise doesn't want them. We've seen people want to hang out with her. Penelope has bad vibes. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know if it's bad or just invisible. How can you, as a woman who has been invisible to men, I've never been invisible to women. I love a female friend. I mm. love being friends with girls. I love being around other girlies. And even though we but may all, not- They've shown all the other girlies and of the ton be cruel and mean to her throughout the season. But she's also like, not all of, like some of them, Eloise was cruel to. Remember the girl who was like, I just want to do like pin stitch or whatever. Oh, and this, Eloise this, was rude to. <laughs> some of them are not very smart, but mm -hmm. they're kind. And she has, she's not even friends with those girls. Like, again, you and That's I true. were not maybe the coolest in high school, but we still had a friend or like, uh, I still had a friend group. I had two. So you had two friends. So you would have been the Penelope. You had the Colin and you had the Eloise. Yeah. I was voted most popular in my choir, most likely to be famous in my high school, and I also got choir back. <laughs> Holy shit. How big was your high school, though? 3,000, 4,000 people. I had been trying to make her tell you, and then I thought, what? I hate this shot. Why break <laughs> You hate us looking through? I hate this shot. It's one of the most emotionally vulnerable scenes she's ever had yes and we're not going from it's the like top. it's like this and the fight the fight she had with with penelope the big blow up fight yeah. 
that and this are the two huge emotional scenes and I believe every second of it. So why is my view through the obstructed st by the stairwell by the yeah. stair by the handrail the handrail why let us get through this wedding that sorry now that you brought up her silhouette changing she looks so much lo more like her mama this is a lady Portia Featherington ass dress mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the lines of this dress mm -hmm. I remember in the first season I was like hey what period of time is this line of dress from and so many people were like none mm -hmm. they are making this up yeah. for the show but you're absolutely right this is it not has a, it has a 50s silhouette it does. Just that like nice mm -hmm. hourglass. And Nicola has a lovely hourglass figure, so it makes a lot of sense to want to show that shit off. Mm -hmm. But I didn't notice that until you said something. Yeah. Please, let me explain. Tilly. Which is short for Matilda. It's short for Matilda. Thank you so much Thank to you. one of the commenters for telling us that it was not Tillamy. <laughs> Wasn't tell you right. Actually, there was like there was wasn't like, <laughs> wasn't Tinkerbell. It wasn't Tinkerbell. I mean, there was two. There was two British people probably in the comments it being like, "It's Matilda. Matilda." About my situation with Paul first privately, but then we were caught, as it were. But they were making out. They were making out in the room. He was outside, and it. He was he was outside. He walked in, and they were making out. So like, y'all getting caught. You wanted to get caught because why would you want? They were making they out. Were just, well, also they were drunk. And they were just horny. They're drunk and horny. But I'm just saying they're drunk and horny. I, we were caught, as it were, is crazy to say. Like they were drunk and horny. Yes. Yes. True. Tell me. Mr. Suarez and I have a relationship. Not Wait, Mr. Suarez? Oh, hold on. What? what? Although he spent time in New York, he reg regularly visited Madrid. He is from Spain. So he may not. España. He, yes, he, yes. We have a Spanish speaker on the show. We have someone on the show. Now, I don't know if he considers himself Latino, but we do have a Spanish speaker. We have a least. Spaniard. We have a Spaniard on the show. So <laughs> let's make our way. Bridgerton, we've started here. We can get. We got one. Or we started here, let's get to Marissa. Yeah. Like, let me start here. Yeah. Let's get here, okay? I have known men like Mr. Suarez, but... And they've I shown it. Mm -hmm. have never felt tempted before. Are you tempted by every woman you meet? No, I'm not. This world of ours, as far as we know it, spans thousands of miles. We needed to leave that is Italy. that is yeah. the simplest explanation of the sexual spectrum mm -hmm. that I've ever seen in a show. Yeah. And I want to applaud Bridgerton. Let's do it. Because you don't need to have a whole long ass speech. It's just no. kind of like, yeah, you may not be attracted to every man you see, but are you attracted to every woman you see? see? No. No. It's uh, you're attracted to people. Attracted to I people. I think I think Bridgerton is Bridgerton. I think Benedict is l maybe like not bi, but more like pan. The creators of the show actually said they thought he was more pan. Really? Yes, they, did. they did. They did. They did. I saw that this week where they actually were I'm like, like proud of myself. I know. <laughs> they. I believe I saw this week that they actually said that they thought they saw Benedict as being more pan, just attracted to people. Yes. Rather than because being attracted his, to a binary. He's, he's been attracted to people's energies the yes. whole show. Yeah. Like he kind of, that's where we follow him. He's just like his curiosity and like whatever energy sort of attracts mm -hmm. him is kind of like where he goes without judgment. Without, yeah. I mean, there was a, a bit of surprise and fear, obviously, when he ran away last time, which is kind of like. That's normal that's to me. That's normal. If you feel something for the first time, I don't know it that can be I, overwhelming. It can be overwhelming, and you need a second to just be like, "What am I feeling?" Yeah, and he's definitely like had time to process. Yes, and, and he's asking questions mm -hmm. without judgment mm -hmm. and receiving information also without judgment. And you could see like they the close up on his hands, like he Being is. Yes, he is nervous about yes. it. It's a, it's a new. New information makes yes. you feel new things. Yes. I feel like I didn't learn about really about pansexuality until like someone like um, Janelle Monae, who mm. was just like, I am so attracted to all types of people. And that 
was like, oh shit, there's a difference between, because I feel like a lot of people get pansexuality mixed up with bisexuality mm. and what's the difference there. And I love seeing also, I think so often society also is accept more accepting of female bisexuality than I've seen of male bisexuality. Yes. Male bi if people that are male, I have friends that are male and bisexual, people do not accept that a man can be attracted to women and men. And everyone. They mm. just don't accept it. They just don't accept it. They're like, if you're a man and you have any attraction to a man, you're gay. You're just closeted. You're just closeted. And you're you can say you like women, but we know it's not true. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice that Bridgerton was just like this is a man who is attracted to all types of people. Mm -hmm. It is valid. It is real. He is attracted to all... And, and, and we're not going to belittle it. We're not going to make it seem like it... No, he's closeted, like you said before. Like, mm -hmm. he's not... No, this is who he is. Mm -hmm. I love that. Love it. And I think a lot of shows would have probably started with a woman, like, maybe done Eloise first and been like, maybe Eloise is bi. They went straight to... To Benedict. And we've been planting those seeds for a while, and we've all been picking up on them, and we're glad we've to see that up. those seeds had flowered. Flowered, fruited, is coming <laughs> true. Fruited. fruited. <laughs> Good to see you, Lord Anderson. It's it. it has been some time. See, this is why I can't be fully gay, because Lord Anderson exists. He's stunning. Dear. He's so good-looking. He God. might be the best-looking man all season. First of all... The green on him actually. The green. First, I I don't think, not to hate on bald guys, but like I've never. I don't think once in my life said. This, You're not normally attracted to a bald man. I think maybe I maybe I've never. I actually don't really care, but not this. I'm a Mr. Clean. No, I'm a Mr. Clean kind of bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with Fabuloso. But <laughs> <laughs> you grew up with Fabuloso! <laughs> if there's a man who's accepted he's fully bald, shaves the head, and is confident, I'm so sorry. Like, you don't need yeah, to yeah, ask yeah, me yeah. another. <laughs> don't need to take another you know, second. You know, I just, something about a confident, again, not a balding man. We're talking about a fully, a man who's already shaved okay. the head. Okay, for you, it's. It's like fully, like has already shaved the head completely, completely bald. I can see my reflection in the top of his that head. That ball. Mm. I am so attracted. I'm very much attracted to a like, a, a, like a Jason Statham, that sort of thing, a Michael ah. Jordan. Like that is actually like, that does it for me. <laughs> this man having the full beard, Ugh. the bald head, he's stunning. And I've mentioned the, this like, to you. Yeah. Gorgeous skin. First of all, he could be... 45 or 75. That's the, again, black don't crack, beige don't age. We're out here in the streets looking gorgeous. What? Okay. <laughs> like the rest what? of us. I, I don't know how, you're absolutely right. I don't know how old this man is. You no, could honestly yeah. be 36 and just look a little bit older. I don't know. And he looks phenomenal. Phenom. Phenom. He's gorgeous. <sighs> I mentioned this before to Marissa, but I, maybe it was even this scene where my husband went, does that motherfucker have to be that handsome? He like, he so was just handsome. like, he's so well, handsome. And also, like, his wide, he's like a yes. substantial man. Yes. And, like, his voice is deep. Yes. That beard is beard. I get why Those Violet shoulders is, yes. be shouldering. Shouldering. Those shoulder boulders. Ugh. He In the forest green. The, the with forest a cravat. Let's go. And they figured out, like, also, sometimes when you're darker skinned, darker colors don't look great on you. They figured out just, like, this color actually is doing wonders with his undertones. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's, a, it's like a warm tone It's a green. warmer. Mm-hmm. He And looks, he has warm undertones. Yes. So it's God, like, I yeah. get why. And it's with the gold. The gold all of it. Is, all of it. All of it. The gold. And even, like, that white. That's not white. It's that like, is a cream. Like that a is cream. a warm white. Uh, Violet, I know why she stutters around him. Because I don't, if a man like this came to my home unannounced, where would your panties be? <laughs> On the floor. I wouldn't have, I may not have worn them that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case he came Just by. Close up on that mouth. Guys, uh, someone, uh, I had already uh, thought about this. Uh. Bridgerton's have an un- um, natural fascination with the way people eat things. 
Daphne season one watched Simon eat that. I don't know if you oh, remember. The, 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 the ice cream, cream off of the, the spoon. spoon. I'm positive there was a scene. And Colin with with the with, with the cupcake. Cup uh, and we're uh, watching uh, this uh, right now. Something about Bridgerton's watching other people eat things. Well, they we get know, and so. Then, and then Anthony with Anthony his oral fixation needed to smell Kate at all times. Someone said the Bridgertons are the horniest family in the ton, and I fully believe that. Because this family sees one thing and goes to filth immediately. Yeah, 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 just yeah. their partners are simply eating or yeah. just walking, living. and they're just like they're just living life, you know. Tr- and the trying, Bridgertons trying to have some sustenance. All have hard ons. It's oh. crazy. Do you think perhaps the two of us could explore something together? Shock. He just comes out and says it. He just that. comes out and says it. I'm so, again so grateful. We don't have to beat around the bush. Also, I like you. They're old. They're old. They're old. She's not a virgin. No. They don't. You don't need to worry about propriety no. at this point. Can we see each other? The widows had the best life. She is the one person who's ever shown me true friendship. Yeah. And where is she to comfort you now? Every point in this scene has been true. Eloise has been your only friend. You shouldn't have turned to her, but also Eloise was your Where only friend at? and she did not come to help you at mm-hmm. all. To know that in this world, it is every person for themselves. Which is not true. Especially amongst women. Like literally, that part is especially not, not true. true. Women only flourish when we band together. Mm-hmm. When there is union amongst us. Mm-hmm. That's the only way that we have been able to yes. get shit done. Yes. It's the only way we've been able to get even close to equality. Yes. Which, you know. You know. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> but yeah, she has a mother that tells her everyone's her enemy. Mm-hmm. So she treats everyone in the tone badly. Mm-hmm. And the one time she made a friend, her mom was telling her the whole time, like, to not be friends with this person. She was never going to succeed. How no. can you succeed she when... She set up for failure. Yes. From the jump. From the jump. And her mom doesn't have any friends either. Nope. This is one to know I've had a social calendar full this week. I am spent. I should see you tomorrow. That's they're right. ever since they're ball. They're ball. They are they're, now the popular yeah, kids. They're the popular new kids in yes. town. I love that for them actually. I do too. I do like that. I again Some, don't, uh, what a little paper mache will get you. <laughs> Just a little cranky, cranky, <laughs> crank. The queen says you guys are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you needed. That's what you need. <laughs> also love her gel X nails. The nails this season have also been. They've been. I'm fine. Some of y'all are upset about like all the historical inaccuracies. We're watching a fantasy show. What? Give me eyelash extensions. Give me gel X extensions. Give me, Give me jewels me. on the eyes. I don't care at this point. I don't care. For me, it's about story. I don't care about all of the other stuff. It's about no. story. What I'm always more frustrated about is story. Does she? Does it help tell the story? Does it help tell the story? Does she look yeah. glorious and glamorous? Yes. yes. It I'm okay with it. Story. Yes. So. Get off her deck and be more mad about the other shit. Yeah. Be mad about the story. Problems. Be mad about the story. There are some glaring holes. We don't need to be fighting about our acrylics at this point. Tacted to each other. Yeah. The fight turns oh, him off. What are you thinking, man? I was thinking. They're also both drunk I here. Mm. It's a drunk fight. It's Not a drunk fight. Man, you have have you ever had a drunk fight? It's the worst it's fight to have. It's the worst. <laughs> Being drunk and trying to fight, you're like, it's like trying to hit a pinata. And yeah. <laughs> you can't make a single point. You, you don't know you what you're saying. You can't make a point. You can't remember. You don't know what you're saying. You can't remember what you just said. You go around in circles. In circles. I've had drunk fights before, and they're just the worst, because you know, in here, your brain is like, okay, here's the point. Right. And you just can't get there. That's yeah. actually a real, I love that you brought that up. I can take care of myself. Then what good am I to you? Why don't I love you? That, that, this conversation right here is actually the heart of the book. Yes. What use am I to you? What do you need me for? What am I good at? And as we established and talked about before, Colin's thing is he, he wants to protect. Yeah. Yes, especially in the in the context of the show, he wants to protect and help. And then he finds out that the woman he loves is better at writing than him, is smarter than him, doesn't need him for protection. Richer than him. And at first, doesn't, he, what does he need? What, truly, truly, what does he bring to the table? What does he bring to the table? And then she says, "I love you," but he, she said that really late. Like he by then didn't think she really loved him. So like. What do you need me for? This is the very heart of their book. Like, what do you need me for? Why do you need Lady Whistledown if you have me and her trying to explain it? 
Again, they don't spend very much time on it in the show because they have 15 other people right, to right. get to. But the whole thing is yeah. like, it's like, I don't need you. I want you. Yes. Which to me. Is so much more important. So much more important. So much more powerful. Yes. Because my existence is not, existence is not contingent upon you. No. It is not. No. But I want you there. Yes. To be hand in hand and equal in my happiness. But it's so unfortunate because they have this combo, which I think is the most important combo that this couple needs. Hmm. And then that's basically it, it in terms of this type of conversation when I think this is the most important conversation that they could possibly have. Mm-hmm. And then the show, they start... They, I thought it should have escalated three to five times more than it is. Oh my God! Let's, let's, see, yes. well, let's see where it goes. And on that step, step, on that step. step. Ooh, oh! Fingers! This man can't stop fingering yes. his woman. Stop. He is a fingering type of he man. As we've established, he's good at fingering, yeah. though, which is very important. So you know what? I'm good. So sorry. I'm I'm good with him. I'm more than good. Good with him constantly fingering her on the street. On the street. On the st- where people can see. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. In the middle of Mayfair. But still, like you just said before, though, the conversation doesn't go like it. Like you said, it could be so much bigger. We don't feel a lot of angst in the show. And I know that's not this couple, but one or two moments of deep angsty kind of like feeling would be lovely. And they don't allow them to do it. And it's kind of a shame because I feel like these actors could get to You know what I wish would have happened? Yeah. I wish what would have happened is he was walking down the street and she comes out of the Modiste shop. They have this. Yeah. And they're in the doorway, right? And then this someone comes. Okay, so that's about to happen. That happens. And then she opens the door behind her. (gasps) And they continue. Drags him into the Modiste shop and they continue. You. Oh, I would love that. Genevieve is all like, uh, and Genevieve is like, <laughs> Genevieve is like, I'm clocked out. Yeah, yes, it's all you, madame. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be very hot. And then they break apart, and then they could be, they could still have moments of being like, I don't know if I forgive you or not, right. but I care and I needed this. Yes, that would be very hot. Just more than one sex scene a season. Guys, you don't... Romance novels typically have at you least two understand. sex scenes. At least two sex scenes. Like, even in Regency. Two major, detailed sex scenes. sex scenes. And then otherwise, sometimes they just have scenes where they're like, they went behind a clo- it's a closed yeah, door yeah, sex yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't... You can give us more than one. I promise, as adults, we can handle more... Because Simon and Daphne, in that first... Do you remember the sex montage? Sex against a door. Sex on a desk. Sex, sex on a ladder. ladder. Sex. Do y'all remember how you gave in the us library. that? In the library. And they in the, in the field. Yes. In, and in they the bed. Did it. They, on the floor. We had on a, the table. Yes. In the chaise. And we had a sex montage in Queen Charlotte. No. Mm-hmm. 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 Y'all can give us more than one sex scene. You can do it. I believe in like, you. Why? Why? Why bother mm-hmm. casting a woman? who is a normal sized woman. Yes. And not show her body. The way I would have again, the way I would have made the way, this show. That's the thing about it. I don't know if y'all don't understand women are deeply horny. Mm-hmm. I was ta- I've been talking to a I, the, in the past week. There is no one hornier than a romance book lover because we will sit in public. Public. I've been on trains, I've been on buses, I've been at work. I've been at work listening to audiobooks and the filth that is pouring into my brain. Panties wet. Panties wet so while I'm at the office putting in timesheets for lawyers. Data I'm- entry with moist panties. We were to wait again to bed. It's just very late, Colin. Late? Where have you been? First person he hugs is Kate. <laughs> Anthony's standing there and the He's first like, person look at him, him. He's like, what the fuck? Like, okay. The first person. She's the favorite. They love Kate. love Kate. I, I, I love how much they love They love her they so much. And honestly, if your brother was Anthony and he has calmed down since getting with... Because you know... You're, it, you're like, thank you. Thank, thank God! You. Thank God for you. You will I have love my you. praises. And we can forever. come talk to you for... That's the thing. She's yeah. now the older sister that they've always wanted to talk to because Daphne's not... Because Daphne's not on the show. 
Daphne doesn't exist. Yeah. So they can just go and talk to her and have a friend who's not going to judge them the same way Anthony would. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever new information you have learned to truly negate all that, then you cannot let one mistake define your entire relationship. So in the books, Colin goes to Anthony to say Penelope's Lady Whistledown. And I thought they were going to do a, I thought that moment was happening, going right. to happen here. And then it simply did not. He uses the opportunity to say she is, she is Lady Whistledown. Um, and then they come together as a family, family. To, to protect her. That's what I'm missing here. And that moment never, ever happened. And I miss it in this outcome. I kind of miss it. I, I feel like, really miss it. Yes. Let's keep watching yes. and I'll, we'll talk I'll about tell it. you where. Yes. It is not your footman's fault. I slipped in. He's wearing the same mm -hmm. exact outfit. Mm -hmm. That he just saw Lady Bridgerton in. Yeah. I think they made a mistake in not changing his costume. Got it. Or like that this was supposed to be. He just has a power color. And then when he sees <laughs> Violet, he said, absolutely not. No. They fucked up. Mm. <laughs> or this was supposed to be the same day, but they that changed the That is the same exact same. outfit. It's the same exact outfit, guys. I think this was supposed to be like he went the previous directly day. after talking to Violet I think you're immediately. Right. You're right. Which is more powerful, to be honest. He's like, all right, you want me to solve things for your sister so that we can fuck? I'm going I'm right gonna now. I'm going to it right now. Right now. Not waiting one second. You're right. This is the, it's not even a different everything. Everything no. is the same. Everything is the oh, same. Oh, shit. I suppose you've got all the good joints in the family. <laughs> Words I've spoken to my brother. Yeah, exactly. Same. <laughs> have you really? Yeah. But like, Marissa and I both have arthritis and suffer mm -hmm. from osteoarthritis <laughs> and fuck every single person whose joints have decided to stay together because our cartilage. Gone. 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 Jump ship <laughs> Doesn't exist. Yours actually jumped ship even earlier than mine. At 16. That's crazy. Yeah. Full knee replacement. So for those of you that full have... Full knee reconstruction, sorry. Full even knee, worse. Yes. Full knee reconstruction, this one. I had surgery on both of my knees. Marissa could not walk on one of the legs for several months. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who have all of your cartilage or don't have like... That's, that's a blessing. Blessing. A blessing. So okay. she's like, fuck. You. Fuck you. You got the title and the, the good cartilage? Joint? Come on. Come the fuck on. And you didn't have to marry someone that was going to treat you like shit? Mm. I might be mad too. Corset. This corset? Titties corset. Is this corset? Wear it outside right now. Are you ready for your dress? God. I did read that yes. she didn't want luke to see her in the dress until she was walking down the aisle so that the reaction that they got was his true reaction that's really wonderful i would do that shit too i'd be like you don't get to see this dress that <laughs> until is, you see it that is beautiful i love that <sighs> that moment of realization that she's having it's basically what happened with cressida in the books having yes. a moment of realization yes. but they gave it to the queen Alex says someone looks down the lens, the barrel of the lens. <laughs> well, we were Mullet. watching this. Mullet. Alex was like, my husband was like, someone looks down the barrel of the lens. Why do they keep that take? Mullet looks right down the barrel of the lens. Yeah. We didn't get to see it. We sure didn't fucking get to see we it. We didn't get to see it. Are you shocked that we never saw any part of it? Because I can't believe... I cannot believe First of all, a sorry wedding gown. Because they didn't even give Edwina a sorry wedding gown. No, I cannot believe Kate and Anthony's wedding was off, off, just robbed. off the screen. Robbed. We were robbed. I can't. Be I kept thinking if they come back, we're surely they're going to show us the wedding. They'll show us the wedding. Because why would they not show us a Bridgerton wedding? I can't. Believe I can't believe it. No, but we'll just talk about it. Colin, how hungover? Oh, really hungover. How hungover Look at this man. Him? He's wobbling. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. He does look really good. Yeah. Do you think they're playing yellow because her color was yellow? Yes! Yellow. It used to be. Used to be. I love that. I love that they even threw out any attempt to be period in. 
No. The hair, the veil, the dress. They were like, fuck it. We need, she's going to look gorgeous in this scene. We're not putting her in some A-line shit that's going to hide her body. Nope. She looks beautiful. <laughs> the colors, the Featherington colors on the cake. And then the these two, two, these two dummies staring at the. Oh, I love that. Yes. I know there is room enough in your heart for the rest of us. Love is not finite. A lesson he has, he has learned. Lo he has learned that lesson. Mm -hmm. He's learning that There's love. There's room in your heart. For all kinds of love. I wonder if this is going to mean anything also for Eloise's season or if it's just going to be a lesson that she's learning here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Excuse me. The I'm longing the gazes they've yes. had. All season the long. Season We've too. talked about them being one of the love stories of this season. Them, the longing gazes they're constantly giving each other. We're about to finally come back. Yes. But yes. You know it's it. time for that threesome. Go meet the lovers. Keeping the letter in his, his pocket. In his, in his pocket. wedding finery. Did you know, though, that his character is based off of a, a real, real boxer? A real person. Yeah. I saw that. I Which saw him really post cool. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the importance for him to do this character and, and like, Oftentimes, these stories don't get told, mm -hmm. and they get covered up, and they don't get their flowers. So, like, in one aspect, I'm happy about that, but also, like, I think it's, like, I think it's just, like, the slow burn of these of these characters and these families mm -hmm. and how it all ends up together will be ultimately satisfying. Hopefully. I hope so. Hopefully. Like, let's be, I think you're being very kind to a storyline that's been going on for now three seasons. That is not the main couple. <laughs> the Montriches were in season one. The Montriches were in season But they didn't have lines, hardly. They didn't really. Well, he, she, he had, had, she, she had, had, she had, she done had one line. I think she may have line. had one line. Two that yes. first season. He was able to have a storyline as a boxer. Yeah. Season two, he got but, his club. But to the, but that was only to aid. Yes. So I understand. Anthony's storyline. Yes. I understand them being grateful and happy and it's wonderful. But I do want to say it is okay to be frustrated by storylines that take away from the main storyline. I think it is okay to be like, great. I'm so glad that these characters exist. But you guys have not figured out a good way to balance out the romance that we're looking for with the other stories that are going on in the yeah. show. The story just, they have not figured out the right balance yet. They've not you know figured what out. would help? Hmm. A sex scene between the Montriches. Oh my God. Have we ever seen a sex scene no! between the Montriches? No. You cannot imagine how charming our town in India is. It has been so long since I've written that. In fact, I should like to see it soon. I'm gonna go through the yeah. scene and then we're gonna talk about this stupid we'll fucking with you one day and child. Our child will always be a brilliant time. And we will return. Please do not make me love you more. Okay, now we can talk about it. This show acts this show acts like we're fucking stupid. They do they think we're stupid? Their season, half of the season was his trauma flashbacks of his father dying and his mother almost dying, giving birth. You think this man, this man, has healed that much? You motherfucking think two people are gonna go on a boat to India while his wife is deeply pregnant and his mother's gonna miss the birth? You Who think? think you Anthony, think Anthony? What no. about a boat baby? A possible boat baby? A boat? No, we're not talking about Benedict. No, we're not talking about Daphne. We're not talking about any other Bridgerton. We're talking about Anthony Bridgerton, the most protective of Bridgertons. We've watched him be protective all season. Just because he's a little bit more loose doesn't mean he's gonna let a baby possibly be born. Do y'all know that yeah. accidents were still happening on ships at this time? Yeah. Do you know that ships were still being sunk at this time? They could Easy. die on the ship on their way from England to India. It wouldn't have been abnormal for some crazy shit to happen on a ship. And you think Anthony's going to let his pregnant wife with their first child after, like you've said, the trauma go on a ship? Please. This is crazy. Crazy.
I know you guys are trying to rectify what you didn't do in season one, which was have Kate have any connection to her family or history or heritage in India. That was a mistake that was made. I truly get upset when I think about the fact that Anthony had a flashback episode and Kate didn't get a single flashback to her life <laughs> in India. Because what the fuck? <laughs> Because what the fuck was that? The fuck was that? I understand you guys want to show her getting closer to that side. Too little, too late. It's too little, too late at and this point. And also does not make sense in story. It doesn't make sense in story. Oh. Do y'all think we, we know, I'm, y'all have shown us. I know us. it's been two years since we've seen their, them. But, but y'all, no, we're still upset about it. I'm sorry. Y'all fucked still up. Upset and also we rewatched everything. You before, have. Before. Yeah. Before. Yes. This season. Yes. And also during the break of the of the, of the first, one month uh, break. The one month break. So fuck off, y'all. I I cannot believe. Now, like I saw someone in the comments be like, because when I was talking about the schedules of the two people and people not understand, I want to be very clear. I was not talking about this scene. I was talking about people that were getting upset, thinking that these two were going to get written off the show. They're not getting written off the show. They're trying to make it clear to the audience that sometimes Kate and Anthony will be there and sometimes they, they won't. Will. I think that is completely valid. What's not valid is acting like these two. The, probably the Bridgertons with the most PTSD, the oldest, the ones with the most responsibility, the most responsibility ever, the most weight on their st shoulders. Yes, the ones who watched their parents die would ever, ever put their own child in danger. Fuck <laughs> up! It's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. I'm so glad you feel the same way. This is the stupidest. Who do the writers think? Did they think we didn't watch we're season going to two? France, maybe. I would, but they just went on another fucking trip. The thing about it is, we all know as a woman enters her like third trimester, sometimes you have to be on bed rest. Sometimes I don't know how long it takes to get to India at this point. Oh, wanna look it up? <laughs> what? <laughs> Four to six months? That's a boat, baby. That's a boat, baby. She's having a baby on a boat with some fucking rats and a guy over here has scurvy? No. I'm actually, like, falling apart. I hate that. Is she showing by now? Again, first pregnancies, very often women didn't don't start showing until very late in the pregnancy. Like six months. So we're talking about a woman who's five to six months pregnant. She's going to have a baby on the motherfucking boat. I heard that. Help! Everyone just and everything just disappeared. This is a again as a Pride and Prejudice 2005 girly Stan head of the like head of the fandom. This is a Pride and Prejudice 2005 moment as we all know the dance between Lizzie and Mr. Darcy, right? Where the and everything disappears. This is that moment. Yeah. I loved this moment very clearly. Someone this and the wet shirt moment. Yes, Gle are gleefully, very gleefully, gladly, openly stolen from Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice, and again, I am a Pride and Prejudice girly. Um, are you 1995 or 2005? Do you have a preference between the two? Which one has um, Kira and... That's 2005. 2005. I'm a 2005, okay, and I've talked about this. I know some people are, I think the first Pride and Prejudice you ever saw is usually your favorite Pride yes. and Prejudice, and 2005 was my first. But yes, this is, I watch Pride and Prejudice 2005 once to twice a year. It's just like, I've been, <laughs> I wa I've been watching it every year since it came out. I saw it in theaters, and oh, I wow. got the I DVD. I have seen it in a while. <gasps> when we you should, oh, I would we love should to. watch that. Oh my God, I would actually love to. I would love to. Would you, you guys would? like that? Oh, they would, okay. <laughs> Oh my god, do you want to? Yes, I would love to. I haven't seen it in so long. I watch it once or twice. Whenever I'm really, really depressed and there's only like only so many candles I can burn in my house to make <laughs> me feel better about life, I watch Pride and Prejudice 2005. I'm just, oh, I think they <laughs> So Anthony is going to be protective about his mom talking to another man, but he's going to take his unborn child on a ship for four to six months. Please. The, the dissonance. The, and you That's know these two happening. actors probably read the script and were like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. But you have, as an actor, you do what you have to do. Your but I'm job. sure you do your job. But damn. And here's another and here's another crumb 
That gets sprinkled. Yes, that what? You're a Bridgerton now. Familial protection. That she has now. That she has now. Mm -hmm. That I wanted to see come into fruition. That never happens. No, because she actually has, again, I, I mentioned this in season two, how every time the Bridgertons get hit down by society, it never quite makes all that much sense because they're the most one of the most powerful families in the town. Like, guys, they may not have the highest title, but they actually have more money than almost anyone else. People don't like to cross them. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of power and they very rarely use it in this show. They're always just like, everyone's nice and like loves each other. But the Bridgertons have a, quite a bit of power. And, and, they, and they have power in numbers. In numbers. And they could consistently be protecting people Penelope and they never do it I think the show obviously we'll talk about it in the last episode wanted to show Penelope being a badass bitch but part of her power now is the family and I have seen backing fans backing her up backing her up and I think what a lot of fans have been upset about with Pollen is they never allow him to rise to the same power that Penelope ever has mm -hmm. they never allow him he to needs ever. to rise to the occasion and they ne the show doesn't let him they keep being like you're a soft boy so stay down here your wife's gonna be powerful and you'll just be a puppy dog after her that's not you quite can, fair you can be powerful and have a community behind you yes I would say that even makes you more more powerful. powerful to have all of that. If she had had the group of them be like, we're going to have her back so you guys can say what you want. But this is who she is. And we, and we still, love her. And we still love her. So what are you going to do? What are you going to Shun do? all of us? I don't think Please. so. I don't think you're going to. Please. And the Mondriches? And the Mondriches. And yes, exactly. Every person that we. And Lady Danbury? Every person that's powerful in the tone, you're going to. Please. Do. You're not, so they never do that. They never allow them to be there for her. She just keeps being, I, again, girl bosses don't have a girl boss alone. Like a lot mm -hmm. of us can be girl boss bad bitches and have beautiful support systems. That's okay. That's mm -hmm. okay. Someone also pointed out that all the Bridgertons are the ones that are left and also Lady Danbury. I love that she's like, bitch, you're my best friend. You're not kicking. What are you going to do? <laughs> I didn't notice that before. <laughs> Charlotte, she's, she's Bridgerton adjacent. That's the thing. Also, what is Charlotte going to do? Like, bestie, I'm going to see you after this where we're going right, to gossip right, about right. this. Like, come on, leave me in the room. I love her. She's so strong. It is I. She, I feel like Penelope's I, about I to do it. Every time Penelope's just about to do it. Every time she's about to, sh to tell say the something. truth, she's been foiled. Yes. she's. It's not for lack of trying, I will say. But then she never tries to set back up. She's always like, well, well you know, this is you weird. know I was going to, and then I, I might go to the queen by myself. Like, after this happened, yeah. I know how I am as a person. I would have probably been like, gone to the castle and be like, listen, they don't know. But yeah. you and me, we got a connection, baby. Yeah. Like, you and me, Queenie, like, we can keep this going. We can going. keep going. I would have Lady Danbury with me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, no, no. <laughs> Not by myself. Not by myself. Not by myself. Not by my mom. Polly, my mom, and Lady Danbury. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I think I would have been like, I need to handle this. I mm -hmm. like being in front of problems. I don't like being behind problems. Mm -hmm. I'm a type of person where, like, if I know, if I can see a problem in the distance, I like to offense, go ahead. Offense, not offense. Always offense. Mm -hmm. I don't like being on the defensive. I don't like someone attacking me and not having a plan in place. Mm -hmm. at the I would at the very least be like, we need to have a plan. So mama, mm -hmm. I am Lady Wilson, my bad, my bad, whatever. Like, let's figure this shit out. And I probably would have talked to the queen so that she's not threatening everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I also just want to say, this is such a shitty thing for a anyone to do to interrupt a wedding, a wedding breakfast to like not just interrupt it i think she made them all go home the wedding breakfast is over Done. wedding is over they haven't eaten any cake they haven't done any fucking speeches that delicious five tiered, the, cake five tiered cake this is such that a the boys shitty, were drooling over yes this is such a shitty thing for queen charlotte to do i know i, I didn't like it i didn't like it either it's just it feels like for her for a few characters in the show they make them again make them do whatever the plot needs them to do but if you've established a character you gotta keep to you've it you gotta keep to it <laughs> also i would look at penelope who's like this <gasps> and be like it's that bitch <laughs> if you look around the but room she everyone like that a lot she does she looks nervous and panicked a lot you're actually so that right. That is her. She's uh -huh. constantly just like. That is her Her go-to. Just constantly. <sighs> Any kind of person you wish to be. Well, the only choice women have is to conceal the parts of ourselves the world will not accept. She's like, you're speaking from a place of privilege and you better check yourself. He sure doesn't because he goes tells Cressida that she needs to be thankful and Cressida doubles the amount. <laughs> so he never learned shit. Penelope! 
Finally! Again, like I said in episode six, by this time, I'm tired of everybody. So, like, I'm glad y'all are re- reconciling. But, again, Eloise, you've been a bad friend all season. Uh, Penelope, you shouldn't have been lying. Like, everybody, I'm tired of you! <laughs> I'm tired of your shit. I'm tired of your shit. Are we shocked that the scene, that this, that, again, you've talked about this, how the episode never ends with the, like, crazy climax. It yeah. always ends with the scene that brings it back down. Yeah. Because the queen Tiny. issuing an ultimatum it, should season, be where it leaves off. This season could have done with one more episode. I agree. It could have done with, like, 45-minute mm-hmm. episodes, 50-minute episodes. With nine, with nine episodes total. Because this shouldn't be, if this is the end of the episode, which we'll see if it is, it should end with the queen issuing an ultimatum. You have until. Yeah. And then the music builds end. Pretend there's a commercial break. Yes. there. It shouldn't be with like, threesome. Threesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or to juxtapose the fact that Colin and Penelope are not enjoying their wedding night. Yes! And someone else is! is. But it's usually going to be a, like a, a, you said, a juxtaposition, a comparison between yeah. two different situations. They don't do that. They don't do that. They don't do that enough. No! I think I love this like I'm not gonna lie everything allowing him to go away think about it come back have the moment I think this is so hot it's yeah. just not quite the place in the episode yeah. I would have placed it yeah but do I love two people already holding hands and then another person coming in and joining them because he wants to be with both of them that yes. is hot as fuck hot. to me hot as and everyone in this situation being so fully on board, so happy to all be together. The communication happened. The consent happened. Yes. Everybody. Uh, 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 we can now just enjoy this, talked, warm, we this moment. We talked about it. Yes. We're, yes. I love that. So, like, yes. even though I think we're both frustrated by, like, the placement of it, the actual scene itself. Perfect. Rats? And then rats? rats? And then rats? Wait! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! How are you gonna go from... Wait! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! Wait! This is really hot! What? I don't know, man. I... We're doing what we can over here, I... I, I, y'all, I could have, rodents, rodents, how you gonna go from a hot ass threesome makeout to rodents? It's actually very confusing because what, when you're watching it very closely, the way we are, it is jarring actually to watch something that we're like, finally, finally. I didn't catch that the first time around. I didn't either. I didn't catch a lot of stuff the first time around. I just knew it felt wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, we should at the end of an episode feel like, what? Netflix shows in particular, if you're ever a writer on a Netflix show, one of the things they want you to build into every single episode is that the episode ends in such a way that you cannot wait to see the next episode. That's why you, it's a binge model. Binge. You quite literally have to write your episodes ending on a way, ending in such a way that people want to binge the next episode. We have not felt anything, I feel like, ending episode six and ending episode seven. No. No. I think there's just, and I, I don't even know, we've already mentioned so many different ways that we think they could have changed story in the middle of the episode yeah. or in the end of the episode. There's not just one thing. I think there's several different things that are going wrong that's leading to such a lack of, like by now, I was just like, I just need to get through. Yeah. Because here's the other issue. Penelope and Colin are basically already together. There's barely anything but going on not. there. But they're not. And if we were focused on them, like you said, Simon and Daphne in season one were having issues, but we focused on them. We stayed with them. So we still had some place to go and we still cared about the couple. Mm. Here, it's just the, the story's like, but what about Cresta? But what about Eloise? But what about the Mondriches? But what about Benedict? But what about Lady uh, Bridgerton? But what about, uh, what about, um, who's, what, Francesca? 
What I about mean, you can you can have those storylines, that's fine, but you need to have at least double the screen time for at the least. main love story. At least or else the pacing won't ever make sense. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm a drunk and sad. When you watched the episode the first time, what did you feel? Do you remember how you I felt? I felt uneasy. Okay. I felt, uh, it was like a, what the fuck? Is happening. Is happening? Yeah. And the, it started on episode six. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Mm-hmm. Let's see if they correct it. And then it just, like, didn't get corrected in episode seven. Mm-hmm. So by this time, I'm resigned to... Yes! Resignation. Exactly. The fate of a bad season. Isn't that... I think I'm, as a person who's probably going to continue to watch the show, probably continue to watch this show, I think I'm a little frustrated that they know all of us are hooked because we care about these characters, but they don't seem to care about the characters. They're taking us for granted. They're, yes. All we want is a love story. And we understand that love stories are going to have tension. They're going to have push and pull. Sometimes characters are going to be apart. But we care ultimately about seeing these characters interact with each other. And it seems like they don't quite know how to make a story happen with two people interacting together. So they keep them apart for a lot of the season. For a lot of the drama. Yes. And then they have to come together at the end. Keep having all of these really important interactions happen off screen. Yes. Like, it's going to happen and in between seasons. And then they talk seasons. about it. And then they Which talk is the about it. the number one sin in cinema. Yeah. To tell and not show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been, we're, we're being told a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff like the Kate and Anthony. Well, we had a beautiful wedding. It was perfect. And we worked through all of our problems. And we worked through all of our problems. And oh, we're okay. going to Indiana Boat. Okay. We have a lot of stuff that's not shown, that's told to us, but not shown to yes. us. And also the stuff that's told to us isn't believable. Not, we're not at all. We're not witnessing it. No, especially because these were huge problems. Like, huge problems. Like, how are they going to overcome this huge problem? Oh, they did it off screen. Everything's mm-hmm. fine now. Some people be like, you guys are just upset that they're not sticking to the books. And no. They- no, I actually, when they go off the page, I think I have said, you have said, when they go off the page, I'm actually very happy to go along with whatever journey they're happy to go on. There's mm-hmm. sometimes where I'm like, oh, I'd rather see more Penelope like this, or I'd rather see Kate and Anthony, but I'm happy to go with you if at the end of the day, you show me more of the couple together, because yeah. what I'm here for is the romance. Yeah. And if you're not going to do that. And what we miss, this is what we miss about the books, is like, the, the books are told through their perspective. Oh, and there's, it's, and it's. There's nothing like seeing a man fall in. Like for me, when it's the chapters where the man is looking at the woman and you're watching him fall in love with the person or feel vulnerability for the first time or realize he's in love, it's so special. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people be like, this season was so Penelope heavy, which I understand because we've, I think a lot of us identify with being kind of wallflowers and not Mm -hmm. happy. But a lot of people I've seen being upset that, that Colin didn't get equal time and that's not something i really recognized on my first watch but going back through colin is definitely to the side a hundred percent of the time he is the wallflower he's actually the wallflower of his own season Mm -hmm. and that kind of sucks like it sure does and it's not really fair for him to not have the same amount of like allowed the same amount of um the ability the chance to rise to the occasion to rise because that's the thing when he tries to rise to the occasion in the next episode he fails when he's about to, when he goes to Cressida and is like, you're not yes. really my wife alone, he fails. He fails the whole season. They never really let him win. Yep. And that's kind of shitty. I think it should have been, you come, she came in to her own voice and her own acceptance of who she is, which is she is Lady Whistledown. Mm-hmm. That is who she is. That is a big part of her. She wouldn't have, she can't do that without acceptance. And we're not seeing the acceptance part of it. Mm-mm. Yeah, and obviously we'll talk so more about far. that when we see the, when we see that actual moment. We'll talk yeah. more about it. But yeah, as you guys can see, we had a lot more to talk about this episode, but it was a lot of negative stuff because mm-hmm. we're just sitting here like, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? It's upsetting. Yeah. So- <gasps> okay, bye. Bye. bye.